Wechamar, Shwe Area Crossup. Artinian, everybody, this is Patrick OC here for the 24th episode of Walk the Crossroads. I can't believe we've been doing this for over a year now, and this month we're going to be focusing on the mysterious bio biotechnological mecha known as Bone Giants, or in other cases, the Jotun, the giants of ancient lore. These were inspired by the Jotun of Norse mythology and other ogre characters. They're sort of our evil enemy mecha. And they're biological, if you want to sense what they look like. Look up Evangelion and also the angels from Evangelion. And even some images from Ra Zephon to get some ideas for what your Jotun might look like. There are three major Jotun types, all matched to the Ekgeta cast, and specifically the Dwellers Drain. There are Galdaras, Branwigan, and Defsquin Jotun, each with their own abilities and power. Let's just read a little bit about here. So, our quote here from the page on the on the Lit's wiki says, I shall cleave, cleave through any who stand in my way. Redwall the Black. For all those of you who have actually gone through and read our incredibly extensive over-the-top history, Redwall the Black was a feared knight that slew many early Chevalier pilots during the Dark Years before the Battle of Camlon and the death of the Void King, or Diopkinen. Kuning. So, Jotun are some of the most feared entities found across the entire Avalon Cluster. Their actual history as such is wrapped in an enigma as not even the Void King will openly admit when the first flesh sculptor started to work on the great bone giants. All that is known is one day ships once again start to disappear across the entire Avalon, across the entire triad, and, what, and stories of large humanoids began to spread of these entities lurking in the abyss. When the Dark Years reunited the ancient Void War, there was little that could be done. It was only under the direction of the Archer Dynasty that the Yotun threat was eventually thrown back, and even at a heavy cost to the Avalon Star Empire. Even to this day, in modern eras, during the Three System Era, the Yotun are a constant threat that beat against the Marcher Line. All Marcher houses often maintain accessible large amounts of Chevalier pilots and active Chevaliers, especially the Eternal, so that they can fight back with constant experience against these biotechnological horrors of the depths. Now, let's talk a little bit about the three different types of Jotun. We again, much like anything dealing with the Gorgara, these things are known as strains, because we're trying to emphasize the, vir the virulent aspect of the Gorgara. The first being the Galdaras Jotun. These things stand about 20 mevres or meters tall and wield strange scythe-like blades in battles. They might look like a comma, a long scythe, or even a kopresh, an ancient Egyptian blade. The skeletal appearance is similar to that of an emaciated figure from a lack of nutrients. They have long limbs and legs and two powerful boosters on the back that look like chitinous spike-like protrusions. The Galdaras Jotun is also able to use limited psi abilities in combat, making them even more dangerous. Imagine something that lands on your planet and proceeds to light your entire palace on fire. And this thing's about over 30 feet tall. That's quite frightening, and you somehow can't fight back. Because you still have to get two pilots into your Chevalier to defend it, while these things only require one pilot. Their heads are often shaped like an animal skull, but then wrapped in a strange plastic elastic thing. They also have mouths. So, this was not done for any other reason other than for terror and for a means of propaganda. Why fight against a living, gigantic bone demon when you can just run away or surrender? So, also for the Infernal House users, you might want to get your hands on one of these things, especially if one of your members of your family has been turned into a Guagara Dwolik strain that can actually pilot it. Brownwigan, known as Bear Warriors or Spirit Killers. Brownwigan are a heavy mecha common among the Jotun strains. Brownwigan styled Jotun are known for their large, broad shoulders and their tall, 19 Mavre stances in battle. Their arms are much longer, like that of an ape, 
and their hands are fitted with large, thick, and spiked talons. Their armor is said to mirror ancient warriors with thick plate and mighty boots that can crush any under their stomping power. Their faces don't have mouths like the Galdaras, but instead only have burning eyes and great horned heads. And again, we're going with the demonic theme here because the Guagara like to come off with the fact that they are the demons of the entire Triad and the Avalon Cluster in general. The Death Skuinyotin are much smaller, but they're also feared for the constant tenacity and their ability to conduct in raids. These things are fast, they don't give up, and they will keep coming. They'll use their agility to take down enemies, and they're also said to be able to shroud themselves in shadow and smoke. Again, a possibility for psi abilities. The actual Death Squid Yotin is light in its design and only is about 15 memories tall. They're said to be almost feminine in how they're created, but are still somewhat skeletal. They are said to have strange wing-like protrusions on their back, which are then studded with blades. These wings allow them to block direct melee attacks and then also strike out if anyone comes at them in different angles. Now, the Death Squid in general are also then fitted with powerful boosters, allowing them to move quickly and dodge quickly, but also to note these things are lightly armored, so a good shot from a heavy rail cannon will take them out in one go. Now, the Jotun, as I've stated, they're bone giants. They're, they're like the Jotuns of ancient Norse mythology or any kind of ogreish character. They exist to basically be the big monsters in the dark. They're not our kaiju, we do have kaiju, but they're big and scary, and there's a lot of them. These things are like, you know, Cylon Raiders, they're like the Zakus from the, the Zeon in Gundam, in Mobile Suit Gundam, or the Angels in Evangelion. They're big scary monsters, and you are meant there to fight them. Some other weird random facts about Jotun. Much like all mecha, they are connected to their pilots. Unlike the other mecha, they are the only known ones that require a singular configuration. They are said to react and even come to the aid of their pilot when not used. Their pilot has somehow also been known to interpret their feelings. There have been actions of Jotun going berserk when their pilot is slain in battle, and pilots suddenly falling to the ground of psychic shock when their Jotun is destroyed. These things are seen in mass, and every Guarish kindred will have their own variation of the three I described. Not to mention, there are special types out there piloted by the more well-known members of the Guarish society. Especially if one of the progenitors takes to the field, you'll see something quite frightening. Again, this technology is meant to strike fear in the parts of the enemy, and also to overrun. Guarish strategy relies on strike and hit and attack, or berserk formations when necessary, or fear when all else fails. Why fight your enemy when you can completely take down any sense of morale and then overrun them, eat them, and convert those who are worth it? Now, as the Amazons say, Fehenshush, spirits to you. See you next time, next month, and have a good day. This has been Walking the Crossroads.